radhika you can start now okay so a very good evening everyone i radhika welcome you all to yet another sustain talks by sustain and save sustain and save is a one step solution on sustainability created by indians for the world we at sustain and save believe in creating corporate impact by bridging the gap and connecting green products and service companies in india across the world b we, we believe to move towards a reverse logistics focusing on waste to be used in a better way our knowledge and resource inspiration which focuses on social impact includes various sustainable initiatives and inspiring stories using our 3r principle of reinnovate redefine and being responsible we aim to achieve affordable sustainability and circular economy started on 22nd april 2020 this earth day by the shroff sisters pranati and ankita who are both entrepreneurs and completed their diploma from swedish institute in responsible leadership and sustainable business today we have a team of 400 plus young change makers from all across india singapore uk and united states of america In the last six months, we have collaborated with many companies and government organizations through various e-panel discussions and awareness programs. Collaborated with companies like IKEA, Swedish government, CII, IGBC, and onboarded about fifty plus companies in sustainability as a channel partners and five plus educational institutions. So in the month of June and July we focused on green products and services respectively in August we had ideators like uh, Rajiv Kher for sanitation and Subendu Sharma for urban forests the month of September was dedicated to understanding water management and coming up with innovative solutions to address the same in October we teamed up with RUR for a design challenge to upscale tetra packs to innovative products Now in the month of November we were focusing on segregation and were successful to collect and recycle 8 tons in the city of Pune. Working on a sustainability technology app we have so far calculated 35000 liters of water saved 82 kg of waste segregated at source and 1700 kg of CO2 emission saved. Along with these basic parameters, we have worked on different projects focusing on various waste in the industry, and are on a mission to make waste an asset, a wealth we shall soon value. Our topic for this month is green buildings. Now, on board we have uh, Rumi engineers, and I am going to tell you a little about Rumi engineer. he uh, his experience is 38 years and is uh, and he has passed from electrical engineering vj vjti from mumbai and uh, he is a be certified energy manager ecbc master trainer and uh, leader ap at us could you try again leader at usgbc and he has membership with ish rae ipa igbc cii environment uh, committee western region so rumi engineer leads energy management and green initiatives at godrej and boys Magne- manufacturers co limited across a 38 years plus prolific association with godrej he has managed and led in a variety of roles including operations and maintenance of industrial processes and systems project management energy management and green building consultancy services his passion for sustainability and energy conservation shines through his active achievement in green space in the industry heading energy management program across busy units of godrej and boys institutionalizing iot industries 4.0 across the organization for energy analytics and data management conducting energy audits and implementation of energy efficiency initiatives post audit measurement and verification of savings and other benefits accrued executing retrofit assignments for existing process in industry and buildings testing and commissioning of systems facilitating cii green co certification across the business units facilitating sbti science based target initiatives program across the business units 
so these were some of his uh, achievements sir's achievement now i pass on to sir sir you may continue thank you very much uh, radhika and a warm welcome to all of you uh, as i understand <clears throat> the background mine is electrical and the uh, people i am addressing is civil am i right yes sir yeah so that you have put me as a challenge so anyway it's very interesting so we have done this in the past so i would like to share my presentation uh, could you make me as a presenter can i do that yes sir kalash uh, yes sir you are host you can share this screen now <clears throat> so is it visible yes sir okay so once again uh, very interesting to know what are the work which is being done by sustain and save so all the best to you first of all uh, and wish you all the good luck in your future endeavors and may you scale greater heights okay and okay. thanks for inviting me to share some of my thoughts and i would like to illustrate this entire thing and articulate it with lot of uh pictorials and examples so maybe your q and a i would welcome at the end so now i am starting this presentation with this uh, building we have got around two buildings uh, way back in 2010 in mumbai we first had an experience with existing building certification under the leadership in energy and environment design usgbc so way back in 2010 now 10 years have passed now this is another building which i am showing you from the civil aspect you will understand the design language of the building that is east west if you look at it or at the bottom i have just put it across you look at the broad side of the building you look at the recess windows um, the heat island effect that is with a roof where you have got a landscaping it also helps in water runoff uh rainwater harvesting if you look a little bit further down the building you'll see an open well if you i, I don't know i'm trying to put it my pointer if you can see that so this is one part we have got a solar rooftop on the top so if you look at it all the ingredients of this building was never built at the design stage please understand now you wanted some information from me how to convert this building as green so this building in 2010 it got operational so way back 2008 9 construction started the thought process is that at the time of design let us institutionalize or implement whatever the green features we have so believe me it never had the solar panels right from the day one you know it never had this rainwater harvesting getting channelized to that open well system so this went on gradually and this is where our green building team we also render consultancy services to outside godrej it's not only for godrej so this is how we went about it so i'm just showing you the uh, structural aspect the structural element and as i you can see on the right hand side corner 2010 then 2015 we got platinum certification 2016 we got b5 star 2018 uh, cii approach igbc approach to partner with world green building council for net zero concept so we partnered with world green building council in 2018 then the thought process was let's practice before we preach so the management asked me that what do we do so i said this building we should target getting into this net zero so in 2019 we went for net zero now you may wonder what is this net zero don't worry i am not talking about some big jargons but i will explain to you in 2019 and 20 respectively we have been receiving awards on energy efficiency which is the latest award so this is all about the building which you can see as a civil uh, uh, from the civil discipline if you look at the building the ground floor it was a very challenging i'll bring out this challenge what was not so challenging it's not a run of the mill ground floor is having a dining plus a large industrial canteen kitchen where entire factory factory of around 10000 people come and dine over there and the food is being prepared so we have got a large industrial kitchen it's like a hotel kitchen first floor is having again a food court and an innovation design center second floor is our interior business you know interior is one of our large business it is having an office 
third floor we do not have any office it is all conference rooms and auditoriums and breakout space so you look at the occupancy and all that thing it's really really very diverse and floor floor is having an auditorium of around 300 sitting plus a banquet hall and a terrace garden which i showed you and if you on the right hand side something very unique we were the last manufacturers of typewriter i don't know whether you know of it or godre so what we did the last remains of the typewriter you see on the right hand side this is nothing but wow waste out of wealth out of waste so we have a lotus mandela and a tree and the below collage which you see is done none other we have got two schools by the primary school students of course under the tutelage of uh, their uh, teachers and uh, under the guidance so this is something as you i i am happy i will be happy to take you and show you around the building once the pandemic is over so we had lot of this case studies happening with college students coming so this is just an overview now before getting into it why all this thing is required why this green building why energy efficiency i don't know whether you are aware of this but uh, this is something called as a earth overshoot day so you go back in times that is 1970 today we are in 2020 earth has got finite resources we call it as a bio capacity down below it is written so earth regenerates itself in a period of one year's time but what happens we consume much more than what it regenerates so if you look at it we are living in debt the red bar graph if you show, uh, see over there on the right hand side is increasing year after year only because of the pandemic you see a little bit of a drop in 2020 so ultimately we are just trying to say that we require 1.6 times the earth to um, uh, conform to our needs normally in our business parlance we said if plan a fails where is the plan b but ultimately please understand we do not have planet b we are not going shopping so that in one shop you don't find you go to the anasha shop and do the shopping this is again the trajectory of the carbon which if you see over a period of time from 1990 onwards okay if you look at the footprint is increasing and we call it as a business as usual because if you go on continuing business constructions etc you will be landing up by the end of the century with a temperature rise of 4 degree plus so as per the paris agreement of 2015 we are trying there is a great effort by all the nations by the corporates institutions to peg the temperature rise to 2 degrees preferably 1.5 let's see how it goes and how it happens so there are a lot of targets which are being set for 2030 2050 to 100 so this is just a overview which i'm trying to give you across okay now coming to this actually core green building stuff so what is this green building so the first thing which you look at it obviously being a civil i am sure you will highly appreciate is looking i am talking about the existing building new building is very simple greenfield projects you have got all the freedom to start with the drawing board apply your minds apply your thought process you have got a good amount of a budget okay uh, any building which may be around 200 crores or 300 crores in that a little bit of a green if you put it and lot of things are getting uh, institutionalized the reason is because the bylaws have changed so nothing is green so earlier when we started off way back some uh, one decade back people used to say it is good to do but today it is not good to do it is must to do otherwise you will never get your approvals you will never get your sanctions for the constructions etc so this is the paradigm shift and lot of materials are available in india earlier we had to import it so if you look at the green building green field projects hardly there is a cost escalation of around 1 or 2% or 3% many times doing green is holistically if you look at it is cheaper but here i am going to dwell more upon the existing building that is a challenge because if you look at it i come from a bombay city i don't know from where you people are and where you have travel pan india if you look at the stock of the existing building they far outnumber and the energy wastage or the water or the waste management you will get a very good potential of savings i am not only talking about water or energy there is lot of issues with the waste and materials etc so the first thing is the site and the facility management so look here if you look at these are all strategically that time as we said we never had a green certification on the day one when this building started 
there were various reasons why we could not do it. So we said, let's attempt and let's drive towards these green rating systems, integration of the design. Okay, let's have the design language that way. So if you look at the atrium, it is having an ample amount of natural daylight facing east west, I showed you. You have got a garden on the roof, you have got a garden in between also. You have got the light shafts. There are eight light shafts in the building. So if you see the left hand side, this daylight shaft, which I'm showing, the light is percolating right from the exterior as from the middle of the building. Even the common areas, you know, the corridors and all which you are seeing over here is having maximum use of daylight. So ultimately, we have done some analytics on the energy front. Now my 30%, 20% of my lighting power has saved because of this good design. Okay, because of the good architectural aspect, good civil design. Now, had it not been there, this 30% would have been a recurring cost, okay, for the last 10 years. So this is something you look at as a life cycle analysis of a building. There were many other strategic initiatives. We had got high reflective paint. We call it a solar reflective index at the terrace. This roof garden is helping me in water runoff as well as in isolating the building from the heat ingress from the terrace. We did energy audit. We have done preventive maintenance schedule. Even the location of the building, from the green building perspective, they said to manage your carbon emission footprint, you must make use of your local public transport. So we have got nodal areas where we have got a station, we have got a bus stand within a half a kilometer, one kilometer rickshaw, rickshaws are there. We operate shuttle buses because our campus is really large. If you look at the circumference is around two to three kilometers and we are spread on the east and the west of the central railway line passing through the central railway. Eco-friendly landscaping, which does not consume much of our water and it thrives on its own. So 70% plus of our total landscaping is native and adaptive in nature. So you see this pictorials, definitely you'll get an idea. This is a little bit of a close-up uh, pictorials. Uh, of this uh, native and adaptive vegetation. This is the entrance to the building. Again, I'm showing you. Talking about water efficiency, water is a very precious commodity today. If you look at it, it does not have a price. It is having a value. If you look at it, the price of the water, which is available to us, it is what? 20, 30 rupees, a thousand liters. It does not translate it to any price, but it is very, very precious. It is having a value to it. Okay. So we went in for low flow flixtures. I'm not getting into these details. We also had rainwater harvesting, which I showed you this well and how it has been done. So this is something. So we got good amount of our savings and management. And further, nothing is metered, nothing is saved. So you must have some sort of an accountability coming from the building and use people. Then treatment and reuse of the water. So we have got, a because of our industrial campus, we have got large effluent treatment plant, we have got sewage treatment plant. So all this water which is collected is taken over there, treated and recycled water is used for our cooling tower applications, flushing applications, for our landscaping application. So significant amount of water saving is possible. Only thing is, yes, you require technology nowadays, you may say, oh, we have got a, such a lavish space which I'm spacing. It's not that. There are now modular STPs available. We have done certain projects in the heart of Mumbai city. We have, we have implemented. So there are a lot of technologies which is really helping us. Health and comfort, I don't have to spell. Today, health and comfort has taken the front seat, if you look at it after the pandemic last one year. So washrooms for the disabled, hand, handicaps, preferred parking, auto system for the elevators, a ramp for the uh, differently able people, even facilities like, uh, we, we call it Hubble, it's a food court, but it's a multi-purpose. So you have a relaxation, reading, playing, table tennis, etc. All these facility features are being given and events have been organized, you know, for well-being. Interior has got a very special event on the ergonomics, you know, because a lot of people suffer from back problems sitting for long hours and etc. So this is also being done regularly on the NAT, etc. Something talking about innovation. So this is what I showed you in my first slide. This is the enlarged picture. So this is the sculpture, Jeremy Mayers. He made all these things from this. 
so when it was being made actually i am showing you the photographs and ultimately this is the end result uh, we also as i told you we had a kitchen now kitchen consumes lot of water during cooking or also people dine 2000 3000 people dine at one given time we have got a very large dining room what happens to the dishes how do you wash so earlier when the building started we used to do it manually and after that we have put this automatic dishwashing machine it's nothing great i am not saying dishwashing machine is very common if you look at it in hospitality industries and all that but we never had it uh, let me admit it you know i am being candid so we had a tremendous saving of water 15000 liters of water per day just imagine how many homes you get 15 liters of water a uh, 10 1000 liters there is a tanker okay so just imagine so this was something really now also you require a heating for uh, uh, requirement for hot water etc in the kitchen as well as for dining room so we have installed heat pump heat pump is nothing but the reverse of air conditioning in air conditioning you get a cold air the hot air is rejected on the other side here we want the hot water not hot air and you get a cooling so this is a heat pump which we have installed it is better than having a geyser or a electrical resistance heating even waste management this is something we generate around 10 tons of waste per day in the entire vikroli campus and believe me since last 10 years we don't have this clean up vehicle coming inside no waste goes outside so we are water positive i am glad to share with you that whatever we are consuming we are uh, generating more water at the same time we are zero waste so no waste so what we do we do we uh, convert this into a vermi compost we have got a large space at our campus and whatever the waste is getting we are converting into vermi compost we have got a organic composter machines also to facilitate during the monsoon season this has got a challenge so we are working on some different principles uh, of converting that into gasifier and from that gasifier we can have some ionization process but this is something a new technology which requires a good amount of investment so this is in the pipeline we are looking at it so it's not something materialized so i am not able to show you and very important part whatever you do in any building or in your career important part why you are having this program today the whole program is being to spread awareness education you know sensitize people sensitization is very important otherwise people may say oh we never knew that all these things are happening or people in existing building there is one issue that is a culture people are so tuned to operating the building uh, doing things in a way so any change if you do change will have a resistance and you may not have a success so this is something which i wanted to share with you on a overall perspective of this green building now be me being a energy guy i'll tell you how we did it on the energy front so these are some steps you must always remember people are very much gung ho and they talk about solar solar and solar nothing is so good about solar let me tell you first you have to be lean then be mean and then be green what i mean is whatever the loads which you have see 2010 we are in 2020 we have got our chillers we have got our assets and all that thing so first we said let us optimize it let us look at it critically then whatever the loads are there whatever the loads are not necessary we shared whatever the loads are there we look at it meeting it efficiently and the last is be green because being green definitely requires investment and also it requires some some amount of care also so talking about net zero or this rating system of existing building we have got two components one is active one is a passive passive i talked about it the orientation the envelope one time you choose the air conditioning the lighting and all that thing now we'll be talking about the active part i have covered the passive part earlier so here again you have got auxiliaries appliances on site and off site what do you mean on site see any building if you look at it if you are trying to put the solar on the terrace you will never have a sufficient space even we did not have it now net zero what it says is that first you reduce your load as much as you possible so 75% of the weightage is given on reducing of the load believe me even the the way the weightage is given for your certification the 25% is on the renewable in that renewable you have on site or otherwise there is an off site now what is an off site off site like for example we have got an off site solar installation of 4 megawatt 
One megawatt is 1,000 kilowatt. That means 4,000 kilowatt. That is installed at Baramati. Baramati, you know where it is. I don't have to spell out. So from that, we have got a tripartite agreement with Maharashtra State Electricity Board. Tata Power is our uh, sub, uh, supplier and Godrej. So whatever the power they generate, say they generate 100 units over here, they will give me a credit note. That 100 units minus the transmission, wheeling charges, whatever the losses, the Tata bill will give me a credit after deducting say losses of 20 units, they will give me a credit of 80 units in my bill. So this is how this entire mechanism of offside energy is work. So what we have done, we have allocated and pledged a part of this four megawatts, say 1.5 megawatt permanently for the life to this building. So we are saying we are generating certain part on the on-site and rest as good as I cannot have the space on the on-site. So I'm going to take it from the off-site. So this is totally pledged. So whatever I generate, whatever I consume the energy, okay, I use the energy. So that is supplied by the grid and whatever from the grid I'm offsetting by the on-site and the off-site, that is how this becomes net zero. That means my energy is a hundred. So I'm generating hundred from my on-site as well as off-site. So hundred minus hundred is equal to zero. This is what I'm trying to explain. This is, I just uh, told you before this slide came that 75% weightage is towards energy efficiency. See, it's very clear. It's very simple mathematics. Today, my consumption, uh, I'll try and see what happens. Okay. Today, my consumption is say 1 lakh units. Now, if I have to offset that 1 lakh unit, that means I have to generate from solar on-site and off-site 1 lakh units. And that will cost me. Supposing by some technological intervention and energy efficiency from 1 lakh, I reduce to 80,000. So that means my denominator is 80,000. So I have to work towards the solar generation of not that 1 lakh, but 80,000, 20,000, you know. So today, if you see the solar cost of 1 megawatt, I've been doing a lot of industrial projects. You have got on the rooftop. So 1 megawatt will cost you around 4.5 crores. Okay, you may note it down. So one, one megawatt, the cost is around 4.5 crore. But please understand, if you don't do one megawatt and if you do only 100 kilowatt, you cannot divide by 4.5 crores and say, then your cost will be more because higher the scale, instead of one megawatt, if you're doing five megawatt, it can happen in 3.5 crores also. So scale makes a difference. Now, how does this net zero building principle works? So this was, I just explained to you total building consumption. So you got total meter. We don't have any DG because you have got a reliable supply from Tata and we have got on-site. Thermal energy is not considered. So in our case, we reduce our energy consumption as per the IGBC guide. We got all the 75 points, energy performance index, EPI stands for energy performance index. So our base case after the simulation was 137. Our actual was there. Ratio is this and we got 45% savings. And there is something called as a contract demand. I would not like to dwell upon that. We sign a contract with a supply company. And for that, there are certain fixed charges which we pay in the industry. So there also I got 96,000 per annum recurring savings every annum by putting the solar and reducing this energy consumption. Further, any building, if you look at it as a civil or anything, first you should understand how do you benchmark your building? So there is something called as an energy performance index. So how much amount of energy which you consume per annum per square feet, you know. So KWH per square feet, these are certain indicators. And that is as per the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Rating. So if you look at it in 17, 18, then 18, 19, and 1920. See, here, this is not so simple. Once you have done a lot of low-hanging fruits, then it is really challenging to get more and more and more saving. So today, let me tell you again, honestly, I am at such a stage that we have taken the last drop of the sugar cane. You must have seen that sugar cane, how you take out the last drop of the juice. So you require a lot of effort, but whatever the juice you get after folding the sugar cane for the last drop is minimal. So now for me is only to change the equipment. That means my 10 year old chiller, I will have to change with a new generation chiller. Of course, the new generation pumps, new generation fans. These are technological evolution which is happening. It's like your mobile phone. It's like your laptop. 
they are 20 to 30 percent more efficient but for that i will require an investment of around another one crore now to get this investment sanctioned from the management and that too with this pandemic setting in and all that thing is a challenging task but anyway we are trying to bring a proposal and a lot of things are there now when we are going to propose to the management one more important thing which comes in my mind and which you should also look at it how will the management believe that what you are saying that 20 percent reduction will come one crore i'll get back my my payback period will be three years or four years etc so ultimately i'm just going to show you in subsequent slide there is something called as a performance monitoring which is very important now these are some of the interior pictures i thought of showing with you so this is a large dining area you can see the setting we have again retrofitted with led see in 2010 led was not so much prominent in the industry we had cfl if you recollect and led was very expensive if you look at it it was only for the allied okay so we did this retrofit this is where the ben mari is there where the food is being served this is the dining area where people sit manager's dining area, cafeteria, et cetera. So this is what I'm just showing you the interior part. This is a 300 seater auditorium, which I showed you that is on the fourth floor. This is the banquet hall, which is having a multi-purpose. You have got some exposition, some exhibitions, some talks are going on. This is the external area, which I showed you from the very panoramic view. This is a detailed view of the corridors, et cetera. So challenges, what are the challenges and how do you look at operational performance efficiency improvement? So this is my dear friend, Mr. Rohan Parekh is an ex-Infosys sustainability head. He gave me a very good uh, uh, clish over here, powered by data, driven by profits. So see, if you, I come and tell you, you give me one lakh rupees, the moment you will say, for what we want one lakh rupees? So if I say that one lakh, I'll make it three lakhs and give it to you within six months then you'll sit up and at least listen to me. Okay, in six months, I'm giving three lakhs out of investing one lakh. What is your proposal? If I say, no, I don't know that one lakh you give me, uh, maybe it may come back to you, it may not come back to you. Then you will say, okay, sir, please go and take a walk. We don't want, even want to hear you. So this is something which I'm trying to put it over here. So whatever that information you have, you must have it very well articulated. So we are talking about data management, big data analytics. You must be reading in newspapers today, artificial intelligence. That's what uh, in my profile I said, I'm working on IoT, that is Internet of Things 4.0. I'm working on a lot of artificial intelligence. And this is very important in industry. We have got large paint shops, we have got large processes where we make refrigerators, cupboards, furniture. We are into a lot of uh, aerospace projects and all that thing. So this is taking very, very important things. So today, digitization, you must be reading every other page is carrying this article on digitization. This is the way which we used to do earlier. Take a spreadsheet, give it to the person, he will write it, then you put it in Excel, and then you are having all these things. So uh, see, this is what we did. We investment uh, invested around, I would say 1.5 lakhs for putting energy meters at each of the system level, equipment level. So for each pump, I know what is my energy consumption. For each cooling tower, I know what is my energy consumption. There are four chillers of different capacity. So I know what is my energy consumption. So we call it as a granular level monitoring. Now what happens? One guy will go and take this reading at say eight o'clock. Tomorrow he is very busy. So he will not take at eight o'clock, he will take at 12 o'clock. So you are having a time of the day difference. So you will have a very skewed reason. Now, what is happening at 12 o'clock in the night? You will not come to know. I will very uh, shortly show you one small example, and maybe you may laugh at it, but it is a true fact. And uh, this is something, small things I'm sharing with you. So it's like an eye opener. So we have all this information, which is uh, gathering, you know, all this is all table. This has got not much of a value, but yes, it has got a value. So if you look at it, January, February being a lean time, April, May, again, it was a pandemic. So if you see my total AC consumption has really dropped down. But my solar consumption should not drop down because ultimately solar has got nothing to do. This is a generation. This is a consumption. So this is specifically I have highlighted these two columns. But then after October, uh, September, a lot of things got opened up. So slowly we are having part occupancies, canteen started operating, people started. But if you look at it in August, September, July, my solar power consumption generation has dropped down.
reason is very simple because of the rainy days my solar generation is not there and all that thing so again i will uh, share with you a thumb rule that 1 megawatt of a solar installation should be giving you around 15 to 16 lakh units of energy per annum and it will definitely vary month over one because of the seasonal changes which you experience these are thumb rule 15 to 16 lakhs is an average it's a good thing provided again here there is a rider you know what happens who goes and cleans the solar panel with the dust and all that thing so you have to have a person cleaning so now what we have done you have seen these sprinklers in the garden unfortunately i don't know whether i put the photographs or not i'm not remembering so there is an auto cleaning system we have institutionalized not only it saves 50 percent of the water but it also keeps the solar panel clean and you can run your this thing on a timer based program you can run it at seven o'clock in the evening where the water will not evaporate you can run it again seven o'clock in the morning when the sun just comes up and your solar panel is really cool and we also did a study that solar generation improves by around five to seven percent with this auto cleaning system because no person can afford to send a person every day with a bucket and give a bath to the solar panels with a mop no way you'll only do it once in a week that too if you are very religious and rigorous or otherwise you'll do it once in a month by that time your solar generation comes down so all these things are monitored sitting down at home so we have got a system which is a web-based online system anywhere in the world sitting down you can monitor this is the system which i'm talking about it so see uh, have how you must have heard of the widgets in your mobile so these are the dashboards and the widgets i'm just going to share with you quickly so this is about this building first january to 31st january why i've taken january because that is the time we were operational 2020 20 march onwards we were locked down so this is my total generation uh, emission grid power generation from the solar how much is offsite how much is my net emission then how much is my loss between the cable transformer loss all these things information is generated and believe me if you want to see today also what happened in 2019 and 2020 you can go back in history and as i showed you that report also comes every day to us this is what you see see this is the very interesting this is my load curve on 2nd of march this is you see on a solar you see the solar slowly picking up because on the roof we have got only 120 kilowatt solar very small but anyway it is helping us so even if you see daily if you see the trend is very similar if you see the hum and the troughs and the crest and all that thing if you see the solar also so i'm just showing you second march to ninth march i'm just showing you a blow up of the particular day of a second march so all this information are available at your fingertips this is what how much the energy is consumed by each of the entity in the building so if you look at hvac scores the most 34 percent this is where we pay more of attention common service is 22 percent fire emergency panel etc etc so now if i show you in all this thing and if i show you it in this graphical format i'm sure even as a civil engineer background you'll be able to understand and appreciate this better so we were also a little bit shocked and surprised we everybody knows that hvac consumed the most but in our case the second big ticket item was 31 percent was a canteen and we were so surprised that what is canteen doing with 31 percent of the share of course the rest is interior hubble if you look at it so when we went into deep dive in this only is possible because we have done this granular level metering i'm trying to emphasize on that you know what is the big ticket item of that 31 percent of 100 percent of the canteen 35 percent is the ventilation now what happens we have got a large kitchen i told you right in the beginning the kitchen is not having ventilation and people wear those caps and they've got the overalls and they are really feeling very hot it's not air condition we can't air condition we can't afford to do air condition so we have got exhaust blowers and we have got supply blowers for ventilation so 35 percent they are huge blowers so the second is the kitchen and the ground floor and dining areas where we afterwards we have uh, switched on to led so we have been able to consume now this is one study even on the daily of the time of the day from zero hours to 23 hours i also have wow, how is my energy profile so this also is coming from tata power daily now this is something i want you to pay attention and this is a very interesting study see what happened this is a sunday and this is where 
on the red curve is what we are consuming and the green is what we are generating from the solar. So solar generation and the grid consumption. Now, if you look at it at 12 o'clock in the night in the noon, uh, sorry, in the night and even after 10 o'clock, my load is consistently showing to around 60 units. So when this came, see, this is only possible because of this online data. You can now have a person at 12 o'clock sitting and monitoring your data. So something is an eye opener and we ask the facility management, what is happening in the night? 60 units, it's not a joke. It cannot be a lighting power, no way. So that is the time we realize that these blowers are there in the kitchen. Nobody cooks after 10 o'clock, but the blower is continuously on. And this is where we have a very good potential of reduction in power. So this is just, I'm trying to show, these are the powers. So then from that 60 units, we put the VFD, we put something on the blower, we put programmable controller, and we could reduce this power of the blower, and we could reduce around 30, 40% of the power of the blower consumption. So this is something which uh, you should really look at. This is 75 kilowatt, 60 kilowatt plus. And after putting this, we came down to 55 kilowatt. So tremendous uh, saving. So now what I'm trying to impress upon you, <clears throat> yes, in any building, you have a best design, good passive architecture. You have the best design equipment. So if you are taking a chiller, if you are taking a palm, if you are taking a fan, if you are taking a light, fine. You take the best of the thing available, whatever the pocket it suits you and you can do your payback analysis. But look at the lacuna when your building starts operating, if you don't have this system to track what is your online consumption, then you are in a wrong fallacy that my entire building is designed. Yes, design is good, but operating also as for the design. Who has to validate that your operations are in tandem with your design? So design efficiency is 75% of the pump. Is your pump really giving you 75% or it is only giving you 25% or is it 65? Second, very important thing when your equipments are new, perhaps it will give you for one year, two year. But now today I am in the 10th year of operation. So how sure am I that am I getting this as per the design specs, which the OEM had given me? So all these things are putting in a lot of rigor. I'm getting a lot of important uh, information. So what I'm trying to put across is we have to reimagine the business scenario 2020 and beyond. So obviously, as I saw, the first and the foremost is safe environment, personal well-being, yes. Smart systems, yes. Digital intelligence, that's what I just elaborated, IoT 4.0. And last but not the least, all these things will culminate into from sustainable strategy to the business strategy. And we are going towards a low carbon economy. You know, nationally determined contributions make India is also signatory to Paris Agreement 2015, where we have promised that we will be reducing our emission intensity by 30 to 35 percent with reference to 2005 level by 2030. So this is what Mr. Narendra Modi has promised. Our solar will be coming to around 175 gigawatt. Obviously, we'll not be uh, we'll be missing the target because we had taken 2022, but uh, nevertheless, it was a stretch target. So this is what I'm just saying. Now, coming to an end of this entire presentation, the food for thought I'm leaving behind with you, please understand one cannot manage what is not measured. And I've shown you with ample case studies over here, any information which you get, it has to be really insightful and you must be able to make decision. Otherwise, data, data, and data, it does not make any sense. It is just an academic exercise actionable measures and ultimately economic success means nothing but the business okay green means business sense everything you'll have to convert into business sense and sell your ideas to your project proponents ultimately it is hand in hand it's a function of environmental responsibility which you people are much more uh, like gung-ho about it and i heard radhika talk about it so it's a very good initiative which is being taken and ultimately what are the challenges in the industry? And you'll also face it, believe me, you'll have to handle it. First thing is the stakeholder awareness. Stakeholder means, stakeholder means right from your building occupants to the OEMs, to your supply chain, everything. Project management, you must have a very motivated workforce, okay, for which 
Otherwise, things will not align. You will not get the results. Energy and water accountability at a system level. N number of uh, um, case studies I have just shared with you. Selection and sourcing of appropriate technologies. Please understand this. It's not a cut paste. It's not copy paste. Whatever may be very successful in Hyderabad will be a failure in Mumbai because Mumbai climate is hot and humid. Hyderabad climate is hot and dry. So you will have to. That's why I'm using this word appropriate technology and material. Capacity building and skill workforce. See what happens. We are all engineers. We are at certain level. Ultimately, your best of the design. Who will translate into reality? It is your workforce. हम लोग जो हिंदी में कारीगर बोलते हैं. Kariger is your main weakest link, you know, to make it a success or a failure. So I have been handling this project on pioneer basis. With all due respects, you will have a very diverse skill force, and you know the skilling is really, really very important. Last but not the least, your entire system should be an orchestrated approach. Okay, work in tandem, so you have to have an integration, and finally. i don't know somehow we are very weak in india if you look at abroad our documentation is very weak you go to any building be my guess 5 years just 5 years down the line and you ask them okay can i have your design details how did you select your chiller what are the technical specifications and all that in fact i myself had a struggle because in 2010 uh i'm sorry to say i was not very much involved so i thought that the facility manager will be handling it he left and today we have some challenges not all so we have done better so ultimately i end my entire presentation by saying that we all share the same the same sky but more important must also share the same horizon that means the same thought process thank you very much so any questions uh, we can look at it yes radhika yes sir Guys, do you have any questions? Would you like to ask, sir? Kailash. So, guys, you can unmute yourself, or you can type in chat box also. Yeah, as we are small uh, gathering, we can shoot the question one to one, and I can take it out. Yes, sure. Uh, no questions so maybe i uh, i may have taken a little bit 5 minutes more 10 minutes but i thought of covering the entire gamut and explaining to you what are the entire uh, ball game or the nuances of getting into this uh, green and believe me it's it's really really going to benefit everybody yes sir sure. guys any questions so maybe if somebody has got some query you can definitely reach out to my email which you have got you can share it uh, we have got our experts on energy simulation testing and commissioning obviously i cannot cover within a span of 40 minutes everything in details but we can have a very specific uh, questions getting addressed by our expert and i am not an expert in everything overall i manage things uh, but uh, energy yes you can shoot any questions i'll be able to help Okay. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sir, we have a rapid question round. Mm. Shall you begin? Yeah. Two things you are passionate about in sustainability. You want me to answer? Yes, sir. Oh, that is on energy and water management. Okay. These are very important. Hmm. Twenty thirty goal in sustainability. Beg your pardon. Twenty thirty goal in sustainability. That is Godrej or India. India or Godrej. 
see india Both. is india is 30 to 35 percent reduction in uh, uh, emission intensity reduction when we say uh, emission intensity reduction is with reference to the gdp of 2005 level by 2030 40 percent should be coming from non-fuel fuel it's not only solar non-fossil means it could be anything and uh, 1.5 to 2 billion uh, carbon sequestration uh, program to be handled to sequester the carbon okay sir the next question is define sustainability in one sentence mm. <laughs> the tough one yeah 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 i appreciate it uh, okay so I, I would say uh, attitude okay attitude is very important Yes, I agree. A piece of advice for a young change makers? Yeah, there are a lot of lot of topics I'm reading that sustainability has got some bearing on your lifestyle also. So, uh, see, that's a behavior aspect. I cannot get into detail, but I've been reading lately a lot of things. So, yes, get yourself accountable, get yourself responsible because the young millennials, so-called, are the torchbearers and we have never inherited the earth. In fact, we have borrowed it. So you're also borrowing from your next generation, which is going to come. So I always get motivated and really encouraged when I have such sessions with young people like you. Thank you so much.